and welcome to my first training video. Uh, first I'll be explaining the exercises which we go over. Of course we have the gluteus maximus clench. First done my way, you sit in such a position and clench each cheek individually. The longer and harder you clench each cheek, the more benefit you will get from this, this exercise. As you get more skilled, feel free to move to the beat of the music. The salad pour technique has you sit in such a position, back nice and straight, and you do the same thing, clenching each cheek simultaneously. These are commonly known as butt clenches, and you should always, always, always do your butt clenches. Next move. Leg lean backs, these are beneficial for doing serpentine rolls. What you do is you have your knees hip width apart and lean back, being careful not to bend at the waist Keep it parallel with your knees. And lean back and hold it. Bring your arms up to your chest will increase the weight. Make the exercise more beneficial. The next exercise. The next exercise we'll be doing is the stomach clench or punch. What you want to do is you want to exhale all of your air, which will create a hole in your diaphragm. This exercise is to get in touch with the muscles in your stomach. So exhale, exhale, bend over, put your hands on your knees. And alternately pull and push out your diaphragm and your abdomen muscles. This will aid you in doing stomach rolls and stomach flutters. All of these exercises should be repeated many times, and you should do these very often throughout the week. Butt clenches are the most important exercise. They will allow you to get these wonderful shimmies. Without your butt clenches, you will not ever get nice, clean steps. All the rest of the exercises do as you feel comfortable. Um, do be careful on your knees when you're doing the leg lean backs. Make sure you're on a nice padded surface. It will hurt the tops of your feet if you are on a hard surface. And do be careful if you have bad knees, please see a physician before you do this exercise. Next, we will be working on a couple of steps. Pause. First, we will work on correct form. Now you should stand with your feet about hip width apart, preferably toes facing straight ahead. I've heard this is the best for your knees. Knees will be bent, rear end will be tucked under, rib cage will be lifted, shoulders will be pulled back and relaxed. From the side, you should look like this. Notice my back is completely straight. There is no curve. When I stand normally, I do have a curve in my back. But when I go into the belly dancer stance, the curve comes out. We call this the belly dance stance. It's not real comfortable to just stand here. Luckily, we move a lot. So one of the first moves I will teach you is a hip lift. So assume the position. These are usually done facing the side. What you want to do is take this hip and pretend there's a string attached to it and it's going to pull it straight to the ceiling. Just like this. This is a hip lift. Now you can do it smooth and slow like this or you can do it with an accent. And on, do on the other hip. Try to always keep all of your movements even so you do not overdevelop one side. Hip lifts on this side. All right, now we will proceed on to hip drops. Hip drops, you want to pretend 
there's a string attached to that hip again, except now it's going to pull it down. Just pull it down. And again, you can do it nice and smooth, or you can do it with an accent. To achieve this accented look, what I am doing is I am doing a glute clench on my left buttock in order to achieve a right drop. And again, on the left side, you can do them smooth, or you can accent. Now notice, my accent is only on the down and not on the up. I can do an up accent, or I can do a down accent. These are called lifts and drops. Lifting, dropping, lifting, dropping. Drop, 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 lift, 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 drop. Very good. Now we will learn ups and downs. That is the name of the movement. An up, the key is the weighted hip is higher than the unweighted hip. Notice my left hip is higher than my right hip. Now my right hip is higher than my left hip. Again, you want to do this with an accent. Left up, right up, left up, right up, left up, right up. Like so. These are ups. They're actually an American move. They, um, in Egypt, they would do the same kind of move, except on the down. In order to do downs, you want to pretend like Frankenstein or ducks or swans. They all walk down. It's also like when you're walking on stairs. Now notice, when I'm doing a down, the weighted hip is lower than the unweighted hip. These are downs. Very good. Now we're going to do what we call three quarters. You can do a three quarter on the up or a three quarter on the down. First, we will do three quarters on the up. So you go up, down, up. 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 do three quarters on the down. That goes down, up, down, 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 down, up, down. Now this confuses a lot of people because they feel like they're up when they're really in a down. Remember, it's the weighted hip that we're calling. This is a down. This is an up. Wonderful. Three quarters take a lot of practice. In order to do three quarters up to tempo, you can expect to practice them a lot. Now, three quarters, as you move them up, I will be doing down three quarters. As you move them up in tempo, they look more and more like a shimmy. So first, we'll do some faster down three quarters. Down, up, down, 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 up, down, down, up, down. Now you might not be able to do it this speed at first. It might take a lot of practice. So don't be discouraged and just keep doing them at whatever speed you're comfortable with. The important part is getting those accents. Boom, 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 boom. You, a sloppy one is just wiggling your rear end, and we don't want to do that. We don't need a class to do that. All right, and then if you want to go all the way up to tempo, it looks something like this. That is a down three-quarter at tempo. Let me check my notes and see what else we're going to learn. I do want to point out 
that you do not have to have Middle Eastern music before you are able to dance to music. Just choose whatever music seems to make you want to dance and dance to that. Next, we're going to learn the waltz step. Now, here all you do is you step and bring your other foot to it. Step, bring your other foot to it. Step, together, step, together. Step, together, step, together. And when we do this later on in the routine, we'll add a dip to it. So you'd go step, together, step, together, step, together. That is the waltz step. And there's also a one called a leaning weight change. All that is, is you just lean your weight and make an, a curve with your body. All of my weight is on my right foot and I'm leaning to the right. All of my weight is on the left foot and I'm leaning to the left. This is the leaning weight change. Also, there is a step called the hip slide. Now the hip slide seems to be a very difficult step. Here you want to keep this line parallel to the floor while moving your hips out to the side. This is a hip slide. It is accomplished by pushing out and down on the weighted hip simultaneously. Out and down. Out and down. This step can be done alternating your feet as walking. Or you can keep both feet on the ground and keep your weight fairly even. It is a fairly small step, and the most important thing is keeping this line parallel to the floor. If the line does not stay parallel to the floor and looks more like this, it is a different step. So hip slide left, hip slide right, hip slide left, hip slide right, hip slide left. So these are hip slides. They will take a little bit of practice. It is a very unusual mo movement to go to the side like that and pressing down. Don't be discouraged if you have a hard time. Feel free to practice these, and then if you haven't gotten the step quite down, rewind the tape and watch again. Thank you. Diagnose basic Egyptians and Persian arms. <laughs> okay. Next, we will be learning a diagonal. A diagonal is a series of hip ups. So what you do is you go up and front, up and back, up and front, pivot. Up and front, up and back, up and front, pivot. Up and front, up and back, up and front, pivot. Up, 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 pivot. It is very important that you change your weight. All of my weights on my left, all of my weights on my right, all of my weights on the left. Right, left, right. Left, right, left. Right, left, right. Left, right, left. You can also do the same step backwards. All you do is change the pivot. You go back, forward, back. Pivot, back, forward, this is a traveling step. Due to the constraints of the, your camera lens, I can, cannot move the full amount. You would normally move this about six inches a time, just like that kind of move. So it would go forward, back, forward, forward, back, forward, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, back, forward, back, back, forward, back. Now this step is a lot easier than it looks. If you are having a hard time with it, I suggest letting the mind relax and don't think about this move too much. It's simply wiggling your hips back and forth and changing weight, so don't make it harder than it is. Next is Persian arms. Now Persian arms is basically, you just roll your shoulders back. That's where you get most of your movement from. All right, now I want you to roll your shoulder back, and then as you're rolling your shoulder back, bring your elbow up. 
as your elbow comes higher, your shoulder is coming back. Bring your wrist up. Now your shoulder is towards the back of the room and your wrist is fully extended. Now bring your hand up. As the shoulder comes down, so does your elbow. Then your wrist and the shoulder rolls forward again. My analogy for this one is grabbing a hot air balloon out of a big basket and releasing it into the air. Coming back down, grabbing another hot air balloon and releasing it into the air. The trick with this step is you have to keep that hot air balloon under your arm or it will float away. So you have to hold your arm just like this through the whole move until you're ready to let that hot air balloon go. To the side, you will notice that my hand stays right in my body. It does not go forward, it does not go back. It stays parallel with my body. As your arm comes up, it's as if you have your hands on your hips, turn your hand in and come up from there. Fully extend the arm and then come up. Bend at the elbow and bring the hand back down. You might find your hand wants to float forward. Just remember you're holding that hot air balloon. If your hand is here, the hot air balloon will escape. Now let's try the other arm. So bring it up. Let the air balloon go. Come down. Grab another balloon. Let it go. Come down. Let that balloon go. Now Persian arms are best done slow. You can do them fast, but they start to look sloppy. The thing that makes Persian arms so beautiful is having a little bit of resistance, kind of like you're moving through jello or even water. You, you don't want to just go whoom. It doesn't have the same effect. So you want to be fighting yourself as you're coming up, like there's a weight pressing on you. Once you've gotten each arm to do this independently, feel free to put them together, as this is how Persian arms is usually performed. As one arm comes all the way to the crest, the other arm starts up. These are Persian arms. You will also hear them called snake arms. I've never heard any other names, but you might hear some. Another analogy I have is if you were standing in a door jam, you would be painting the door jam. So you come down with the paint and up with the paint and flip your hands and come down. This move can be very challenging and if your arms are not used to moving in this direction, you will feel a little tension. Stop if you get tired. Now please go ahead and stop the tape and try these moves. The basic Egyptian, sometimes called the basic walk, sometimes called basic, sometimes called the Egyptian. What it is, is you put your foot forward, you twist forward, keeping the weight on your back leg, twist back, and then step forward, putting the weight onto your forward leg. And you should also hit, have a little bit of a twist when you change that weight. So you twist forward, twist back, step down and twist. Twist forward, twist back, step down and twist. Forward, back, step down and twist. Forward, back, step down and twist. Forward, back, step down, twist. Forward, back, step down and twist. Forward, back, step down and twist. Forward, back, step down and twist. You can also do these backwards. Twist forward, step back. 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 Twist forward, back, step down, twist. Forward, back, twist. Forward, back, twist. Forward, back, twist. Again, you don't really want to move very much with this step. You want to move about, your foot should be about where your heel 
is even with your toe when you're doing the forward back. Because we do not like to take big steps. We like to dance in smaller areas and use up less space. And the closer your feet are together, the larger your hip movements will appear. So let's try that again. Forward, back, step down. 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 Forward, step back. 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 Forward, twist down. 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 Again, you will get better accents when you use your, your rear end and clench that muscle. So you'd go clench, clench, clench in order to get that full movement. So now you're going to clench on your right, clench on your left, clench on your right as you're changing weight. Clench on your left, clench on your right, clench on your left as you're changing weight. Clench on your right, clench on your left, clench on your right. Clench left, right, left. Just like that. And that's a basic Egyptian. These are usually performed about this speed. And again, it is coming from the gluteus maximus, those nice tight clenches. Now we'll learn the turning basic Egyptian. You do that same movement, but instead of moving forward, you're going to turn your foot to the side. So you put your foot forward, clench forward, back. When you step down, you turn your foot to the side. And then your next one is to the side. So forward, back, turn your foot. Forward, back, step down. Forward, back, turn your foot. Forward, back, step down. Forward, back, turn your foot. Forward, back, step down. Forward, back, turn your foot. Forward, back, step down. Forward, back, turn your foot. Forward, back, step down. Forward, back, turn your foot. Forward, back, step down. Forward, back, turn your foot. Forward, back, step down. You can do them going the other way. Forward, back, turn your foot. Forward, back, step down. Forward, back, turn your foot. Forward, back, step down. Forward, back, turn your foot. Forward, back, step down. Forward, back, turn your foot. Forward, back, step down. That is a turning basic Egyptian. Next, we will be learning a forward hip push or pivot. You just want to, if you had your hand in front of you, you would want to be hitting it with one of your hips. And again, this is coming from that gluteus muscle clenching. And you, then you do this, once you get comfortable with that motion, moving to the side. And then you do it on the other hip. Forward, 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 forward. Right when you're going forward, the weight is on the moving hip. So now it's left, right, left, right, left, right, left. is a forward hip push. Why don't you stop the tape and try these moves? The next move we will be learning is called a Mayan, or a vertical hip figure eight. The idea of a Mayan is your hips are going to make a figure eight, just like this. All right? Now, this movement, strictly vertical, has no forward and back movements to it. So what you want to do is go into a really big up. All of the weight is on my right hip. Then push it out to the side, just like in hip slides. And then go into a down, just like in our downs we were doing earlier. This makes the hip on the other side be ready for that up. Here is where you change your weight. Now my left hip is up and the weight is on my left hip. Now you move it out. Then you go into a down. 
Now this hip is ready, ready to receive the weight. Up, out, down. Up, out, down. Up, out, down. Up, out, down. And you can do this move with both feet planted firmly and kind of sharing the weight. As long as you know that the weight is supposed to be on the moving hip, because eventually we'd like to be able to do this walking. So it is be probably best to practice with one foot off the ground at a time. Now a broken one would look like this. Up, out, down. Up, out, down. Up, out, down. Now as you see that up is already has already occurred and you don't have to make that up occur. So make sure you're very flat and this is what a mind would look like from the side. Notice how it is staying right in my body range. Obviously we do not do mines um, when we're performing to the side because you can't see a whole lot of the move. They are best done facing front. The more you bend the knees, the better benefit you will have in making your hips look bigger. A Mayan without your knees bent looks kind of like this. Not very impressive, so make sure you bend those knees very, very deeply. And that'll give you your great, big Mayans. These are a very belly dancer move, so practice these a lot. You will. Learn to love them once you get them down. Mayans can be performed slow or they can be speeded up a bit, but you don't really want to make them go too fast or they look kind of silly. Wonderful. Let's stop the tape and see if we can do Mayans. We'll be learning some more accents. First, we're going to learn a chest pop or lift. Now we're going to use our imaginary string again and we're going to attach it to our sternum this time. We're going to pull our rib cage all the way to the ceiling and then let go. Up, down. Lifting, releasing. Lifting, releasing. Lifting, releasing. And again to get the chest pop you want to do that abruptly. Boom. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. These are called chest lifts. Do be careful when you are doing chest lifts that you don't want to roll your shoulders like this. It will make the, the moves look odd. Usually when I do these, I do them in this position. You can do several chest lifts in a row, or you can do just one as an accent. Or you can do several. There are also chest drops, in which case that string is pulling to the ground. It's kind of like someone is punching you in the diaphragm. Ooh, ooh. Pull, pull it to the ground, 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 pull it to the ground. So that is a chest drop. So if I was going to do lift, drop, lift, drop, lift, drop, lift, drop, lift, drop, lift, 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 drop, 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 lift, drop, lift, drop, lift, drop, lift, drop. Very good. Now we're going to do those same kind of moves on our hips. We're going to do what we call a pelvic drop. It is easiest done on your toes. I will demonstrate flat-footed first for you. Make sure you have that nice straight spine, knees really, really, really bent, and very relaxed. What you're going to do is you're going to use your abdominal muscles to push out, causing your hips to tip downward. It's a very small movement. And do be careful when you're doing this movement. It is possible to push with your, your legs, and you can compact your lower spine here. So be very careful with this move. Try to do it with your abdomen. It will make your abdomen sore if you're not used to this kind of motion. The key is 
being very loose in the hips. And being in touch with the, your stomach muscles. Doing those stomach crunches will really help with this one. You can do this one fast. Or you can do it as an accent. Very good. So those were pelvic drops. Pelvic tucks are you putting that string and pulling it to the ceiling. And you do this by clenching both cheeks at the same time. Please make sure you're not facing the audience when you're doing this accent. Usually we just do this one as an accent. We do not do it in repetition. All right, now there's a foot pivot. To do this, you start with both feet facing one direction, the back foot slightly in front of the other foot, and you come up on your toes and you turn around. Now your feet are in opposite position. Come up on your toes, turn around. Up on your toes, turn around. Up on your toes, turn around. That is a foot pivot. Now try this combination. I want you to do a chest lift and then a foot pivot and then a pelvic drop. So you go lift, drop. Lift, drop. in the routine later on. Why don't you stop the tape and try these moves? We'll be learning undulations. Now my analogy for this is you are on a sandy beach and you have fallen asleep sitting up and somebody has buried you all the way up into your hips, burying your hands next to your hips. And you need to get free of the sand. So what I want you to do is lean back Dig your rib cage into that sand. Push the sand forward. Now come up so the sand will fall off. Lean back and dig in for another push of that sand. Come forward, back, down, forward, up, back, down, forward, up. So when you smooth it out, it looks like this. Now, if you're trying this for your very first time, I do suggest sitting on the floor with your hands on your knees so that you are just moving your chest. Sometime when you stand up, it's really hard to isolate it out of the lower half of your body. This is what they would look like smoothed out. Now, if you do this particular motion while walking backwards, it is called a camelback. I would call this a body wave. I picked that name arbitrarily just so I could call an undulation one direction or another. The wave, this roll right here, goes down. If you watch, rolls, goes down. That makes it a wave. Okay? Now, you decided you're too hot. You like that nice, cool sand up against your body. Now you're going to bury yourself again. So what I want you to do is come all the way up, stretch as far forward as you can to get as much sand as possible, sink down into that sand, pull it towards yourself. Now you have to lift up so the sand will fall out. Lift all the way forward, come down, pull forward, up, go get more sand, come in. And when you smooth it out, it looks like this. You can do these smaller. Or you can do them very large. I call this one a roll. To help you remember, fruit roll up. Therefore, this roll goes up when you do this move. See the roll moving up? Now, this one is really wonderful for releasing tension in your back if you sit at a desk all day. Just lean out of it. Lean out of it and go the other way. It's very, very relaxing. 
If you are not used to moving your back, you might find you are very stiff and it will, might take you a while to get used to having this motion. One of the things I suggest to help you get into that is do what your mom always told you not to do and slouch. So at some point in this, you are in full slouch position. Just beware that your shoulders are not going to be slouching, just your back. And then come forward, go into that slouch. All the way up, come forward into that slouch. Now again, you want to keep your shoulders from rolling. You do not want effect. The shoulders will move slightly because they are attached to your rib cage, but they should no way be a focus. Very good. Those are undulations. Next, we will be learning shoulder pushes. Now, a shoulder push comes from this muscle right there, and you want to move your shoulder towards the wall. Again, we're trying not to roll that shoulder, but just push that forward. You should get a little bit of an indent right there. From the side. Here's a little secret. If you've ever seen anybody with this effect, we eliminate that by simply rolling so that the eye of your elbow is facing the front of the room. When you do that same move, the jiggle is gone. A little bit of a cheater trick there. So now from the front. These are shoulder pushes. These will also be in your routine later on, as will most of these steps. If you make them go faster, it becomes a shoulder shimmy. Now we are in fact moving our shoulders and not our rib cage. Very good. You will find this will build up a lot of strength in your upper arm and your shoulder if you're not used to lifting weights. Shoulder shimmies look best not in this position, so please be wary of your arms and make sure they are in a presentable position. All right, for our next step, we're gonna learn inverted hip circles. Now, a hip circle is simply where your hips go around in a circle. Now, in an inverted hip circle, your hips are going one direction while your body is going the other. Like so. If you will notice, my hips are going clockwise. Clockwise. While my body is turning counterclockwise. To accomplish this, you first want to practice doing your hip circles, alternating your weight. So as you come forward, the weight will shift on to your right foot until it's all the way out at the side. And then as it goes back, the weight will shift on to your left foot. Once it's on your left foot, that'll be your furthest point of your circle towards the left. You go forward, side, back. Forward, side, back, side. Forward, side, back side, forward, side, back, side, forward, side, back, side. Try it moving your feet. Forward, side, back, side, forward, side, back, side. So when you're forward and when you're back, your feet are both on the ground and your weight is pretty evenly distributed. And it's the same thing when you're doing an inverted hip circle. Now the feet on an inverted hip circle, just the turning part, you turn, 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 turn. So you're just basically turning your feet a little teeny bit around at a time. There are many variations of the inverted hip circle. You can do it in two revolutions, one step in front, one step in back, 
That would be the biggest form. You can do it in fours, one step in front, one step on the side, one step in back, one step on the other side. Or for this routine, we're going to do several very small ones and only go halfway around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So those are the inverted hip circles. Let's try it on the left hip. So you want your left hip to be making counterclockwise circles. And then you're going to turn to your right, going clockwise. And if I slow that down a lot, it would look like this. Now notice when I do go into the furthest back position, I am not hyperextended as such. My back is still flat. Here, here, still flat. Very important. All right, let's move on. Our next step is a hip push. Now these, you just are simply moving your hip into a direction. These are an accent. An accent is when you're just doing one or two of a certain step to make a statement. Like in a sentence, you would say, wow that would be your accent, where the rest of the sentence would simply be the steps. So this is an accent move. So you're going to go out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in. Now how I'm getting that nice jiggle is by clenching my cheek. Clench the left. Clench the right, clench the left, clench the right. And then to do the out in, you clench the left, clench both. Clench the right, clench both. And that'll bring you back to center. So those are hip pushes, simply. All righty, now to move on. A turn. Now a turn versus a spin. When in my terminology, a turn is where you lift your feet off of the ground, like such. Now I have learned when taking still pictures that lifting both or the foot off of the ground completely and pointing the toe is very important when you're in still pictures. Otherwise you end up with odd angles of your feet. It's hard to remember to always turn this way. And often you will see us turn simply like this. Now notice in a turn, I am not going to be rubbing the, the skin off of the bottom of my feet because I am in fact lifting up my feet and repositioning every time. That would be a turn. In my terminology, I would call this a spin. Notice the foot just pivoted on the carpet. It will hurt if you do this on carpet or concrete without shoes on. Do be careful when you're spinning. Spinning are also less controlled than your turns. If you spin, you kind of end up just wherever. When you're turning, you have more control. You know exactly where you're going to stop every time. So that is a turn. Next, we'll be learning a V8. Now, V8s are a lot of fun, and you can do any kind of accent you want with the V8. And they will move a lot more than I will be demonstrating today due to the lens. So a V8, what you're going to do is you're going to turn your foot out, turn around, step behind yourself, pose with the left hip, Usually, I teach this with a hip lift on this accent. Step down on the left, accent on the right, 
I usually do a hip lift when teaching. Step back on the right, step back on the left, across with the right, back with the left, step down with the right, lift with the left, step down with the left, lift with the right, back, back. That was all one step. It kind of makes a V, which is where it gets its name, and there's eight counts in it. So we will do that again. Out, turn around, step down, accent, accent, back, back. Turn around, accent, accent, back, back. Turn, two, three, lift, lift, back, back. Turn, two, three, lift, lift, back, back. Now you can do several different accents with this. You don't necessarily have to do the lift, lift. You can do turn, two, three, twist, chest, back, back, turn, two, three, shoulder, stomach, back. You can use this with a variety of different steps. You can do this just about any tempo. You can do it very slow. Or you can pick the other beat in the music and make it go faster. As so, the V8 will not be in our routine. I just wanted to show you because it's a lot of fun. The next one is a head slide. Now this is something that everybody will think of when you tell them you're taking belly dance lessons. Head slides are not used as much as they probably could be, and they're a very, very small movement. Now how I like to practice them is I anchor my pinkies on my throat, and I put my thumbs about an inch away from each cheekbone. Now the idea here is to push your cheekbone to your thumb. Now you want to do this straight across. You don't want to tip your head. You don't want to turn your chin. Just simply straight across. It is a very, very, very small movement. These are called head slides. They look best properly framed which makes them look bigger. Anytime you put boundaries on a move, it will make the movement look bigger. You can do head slides quickly or slowly. They're a very belly dancer -y step. Also not in the routine, just something for fun. Now the next step I'm gonna teach you um, before we do that, why don't I stop the video and let you practice for a while. The learning are also not in your routine and just for future reference. The first one is called an Arabic one. Simply, it is one foot is always on the ball, one foot is always flat, like such. Now I have chosen, I am not sure, I'm, this is a Salonpour move. I am not sure if Suhaila would endorse where I have my foot position, but this is where I have chosen to place my feet. I always have the bald foot behind the flat foot, and I would use this as my audience foot, the bald foot. Now Suhaila, when she taught this, she said there is to be no movement except in the feet. Your rear end does not move, your torso does not move, unless you choose it to. Now personally, that's an awful lot of work to not get any move out of it. So when I do Arabic ones, I like to swing it a bit. Just like this. So when you go back on this foot, you actually let yourself come up, and you give yourself a little bop to it. Arabic one on the other foot, just like this. Fairly simple move, but effective. Okay, that was an Arabic one. Now on Arabic two is the same principle. You go flat, ball, ball, ball. Flat, ball, ball, ball. So the same foot is always going flat. And again, I usually do this move moving to the side 
This one, I use the flat foot as my audience foot. Flat, ball, 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 flat, ball, 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 flat, ball, 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 flat, ball, ball, ball. Again, this is another Salampur move, and Suhela did teach it to me just moving like this. The derriere did not move back and forth, neither did the torso move, and then she added an undulation on top of it. This is a lot of work. I personally like mine to be a lot bigger of a movement. When I do my own Arabic twos, I have a tendency to put a full body undulation in it. Looks like this. Flat, ball, 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 flat, ball, 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 flat, ball, ball, ball. And if you were to do them on the other side, flat, ball, 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 flat, ball, 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 flat, ball, 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 flat, ball, ball, ball. So those are the Arabic twos. Now quickly before I forget, I'd like to mention the rules that are sometimes broken. First, if you are facing the side, which arm goes up? Now my general rule is, if the audience is can see whether or not you shaved today, and it looks like you're checking to see if you're sure, you probably have the wrong arm up. General rule number one. My second general rule is in leg position. There's a step called a hinge, which is a pelvic tuck. We were doing these earlier on the tape. Now, if you were to do a hinge with your audience leg backwards, it looks like this fairly questionable. If you do that same movement with the audience foot crossed forward, it looks a lot more acceptable. So that is my test to see which foot goes forward. So proper form in my eyes, if you were to face the side with one arm up and one foot posed would be this position. This is incorrect. Alrighty, now we get to start on the routine. First, I'll stop and let you practice. This is the routine we'll be learning. It was choreographed by me, Rama, in 1999 and modified for the basket in February of 2000. It's off of the Lebanese music mix. I received the tape from a California dancer named Jawahar. She may have more copies available. You may be able to find her online. I believe it's J-A-W-A-H-A-R, I believe. Um, the name of the song is not known because the tape is not labeled. It was originally choreographed for six veils and four swords. I have redone it to include strictly baskets. I hope you enjoy this dance. For a copy of this, call 498-0959 and Rocky Mountain Belly Dance Company will be happy to send you a copy. Now on with the show. attempt at our new routine. It starts out with the waltz step. You do three waltz steps as you wait the first music change out. One, two, three. Then you go into leaning weight change and change and change. There's only a slight variation in the music to let you know when to change. Then you go into Little Baby Mayans while moving the basket back and forth and coming down. Now this next step is kind of tricky, especially if you're doing this on carpet. I suggest wearing socks. So first you turn to your left and you do a chest lift with the basket about at your navel. 
Then you pivot around, and the basket comes up over your head, and you do a pelvic drop. Then you turn, chest lift, turn, pelvic drop, turn, chest lift, turn, pelvic drop, turn, chest lift, turn, pelvic drop. There are eight of these. After you have done your last pelvic drop, you will turn and slowly place the basket upon your head. You have about four counts to do this. Your arms become extended like this. Then you're going to do a basic Egyptian turning, 12 counts, starting on your left hip. Turn. When you are finished, you should be facing a three-quarter angle, not quite to your audience, so they can get a good view of your undulations. Which is the next step? There are four undulations. Pushing the sand forward, come up and down. Forward, up, down. Forward, up, down. Forward, up, down. This is very good practice to keep the basket on your head. Now why don't you stop the tape for a moment and try those couple of steps together. Now that you've tried that, now feel free to add on the next step. So first you're going to do your undulations, and then you're going to go into a Mayan. And you kind of cheat your first one to turn back to your front audience. Two, three, then you go quick, quick, quick. Now you're going to go into basic Egyptians walking backwards. There's eight of them, starting on your outside hip, which will be the left in this demonstration. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The arms will then come to here. Next, you're going to do Mayans walking to the side. First, you come up and out then in, up and out, in, up and out, in, up and out. There are about eight counts of those, a total of four. Then this hand will come down so it is parallel with the floor, other hand is parallel with the ceiling, elbows are bent. Now you're going to do single hip twists forward, twist, 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 twist. Coming back to your center. After that, bring your other arm up. Now stop the tape and try those steps together. So you just finished doing forward hip twists. Now the arm will come back up and you will go into diagonal starting on your left hip. Forward, back, forward, pivot. 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 Forward, back, forward, forward, pivot, forward, back, forward, pivot, forward, back, forward. There are eight counts of those. Keep in mind, you can move more than I do. All right, next is that those hip pushes that we had learned. So first you're gonna go hip out, then come in, chest lift, chest drop, hip out, hip in, chest lift, chest drop, and then your left hip out, right hip out, chest lift, chest drop. Now you're going to flip your arms over and do shoulder pushes starting on your right shoulder. One, two, three, four. Then you go quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And there are several of those. I do the level change so that you're not just standing here going like this. After you've done last of your shoulder pushes, you come in to prayer position. Feel free to stop the tape and try that. All right, now after the prayer position comes Persian arms. If you are doing the left side, you will start on the right arm. There are 12 Persian arms, six on each side. Remember to try to have your good form on these Persian arms.
Now, arms come back together, and you're going to do little baby inverted hip circles. So get that right hip moving, right hip moving, right hip moving. And you're going to come around until you're facing back. Now you do right hip Mayan, left hip Mayan, right hip Mayan, left hip Mayan, right hip Mayan, left hip Mayan. You stop, take the basket off your head, hold it up. Now you're going to do basic Egyptians turning to the front. Basic step down, 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 basic step down. Now the basket will come to your chest level and you continue doing basic Egyptians. Eight more moving forward. One, two, three, four, Seven, eight. Now you will turn counterclockwise rather quickly, a turn and a half. And that is your end. Take a bow and walk off. If you feel comfortable, feel free to pass the basket around and try to collect those tips. Wonderful. Now we will try it once to music. to the music. in costume what the basket routine would look like with the sword.
going to give you a brief overview of the zills. First, our singles. One, two, one, two, one. Next is doubles. Longa or threes. One, two, three. 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 Then there's fours. I've never seen anybody do eights, but you sure could. Nines, I've seen people do. You can figure those out on yourself. Some of the patterns we did was Bellity. Doom, doom, tech, tech, doom, tech, tech. Doom, doom, tech, tech, doom, tech, tech. One, two, one, two, three, one, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three, one, one, two, three. One, be Humpty Dumpty. wanted to mention there are three different ways to play the zills. Most of the time I was doing a clap. There's also a tech and a ring. A ring is the most commonly accepted way to play your zills. And then there, we also can do a variation where you can go problems. Be expecting those.
so much for watching. I would like to give credit to the background music I was using. I was using Omar Fartouk's um, Omens, Oracles, and Mysticisms. I was also using Sheikh Me Saeed. I am at a loss at who made that album, I'm sorry. And the, the routine again is on the Lebanese dance music mix. Thank you and happy dancing.